Greetings once again, I'm Buhle Lachwayo and welcome to Sasi TV. We're here at the Sasi House in Midrand to attend the open discussion on what led to the 15 VAs to take legal action against the Department of Public Works as well as the Engineering Council of South Africa. According to the VAs, the changes made to the current 50 council were not legally consulted. SAEC CEO Manglin Pele gives us an idea of the current state of relations between EXA and the VAs and the steps that were taken to ensure that the matter was resolved before it became an ongoing lawsuit. I'm joined here by the CEO of SASI, Manglin Pele. Manglin, thank you so much for joining us and a warm welcome to SASI TV. Thanks very much. All right, now let's get into the first question. Where did the relationship between EXA and the rest of VAs go wrong? Well, it started in, in the process of the appointment of the new council. Um, I would like to think that the relationship between EXA and the voluntary associations was a strong one. Um, the decisions started coming through from the engineering council. Uh, those decisions were marginalizing the voluntary associations, where the work that was undertaken on behalf of EXA by the voluntary associations uh, was being removed. So, for example, we, uh, as, as the example, SIC conducted the peer review process for professional registration, and we were asked to stop that mm -hmm. and to not do that any longer. Uh, so we would we were wondering what was going on. Um, and there were very other disbandments, um, changing of the VA uh, relationship with the Engineering Council. There was a framework that was put forward. We had commented on that, and then the Engineering Council did not take those comments into consideration. Um, and then ultimately was the um, uh, appointment of this unlawful council. And obviously that was you know huge concerns, and it has dire impacts on the, on the industry. Uh, so, based on some of these happenings, you know, I, I think the tension began between EXA and the voluntary associations. I think as an engineer, based on what we are doing, the concern for the ethics and the morals of this profession, based on the litigation that's currently happening, engineers can be proud that there are people standing up for the right things in our country. This litigation is an indication that there are people who have a genuine interest in the ethics of this profession. So particularly civil engineers can be proud of the fact that we are making a good fight on their behalf. So they can stand tall and walk proud in, in public here. Yeah. And looking at tonight's open discussion, it has been noted that EXA could not join us and they've rejected the invitation. What are your thoughts of that? Look, it's, uh, we, we've certainly sent an invitation to, to the Engineering Council. Um, the Head of Communications who, who received in, an invitation, it's their prerogative to accept or, or, or not, not to accept that invitation. And we respect that their decision not to, uh, not, not to participate. However, I do think an opportunity was missed to clarify their position, their stance on on the entire pro, on their process, and, and it will be wonderful to, to hear what what the engineering council council has to say, and um, the impression that is created in the public when when the engineering council is quiet is that this is a one-sided affair, and we miss the opportunity to have healthy discussions and um, to expound to the public and to our members and to the exiles registrants of what exactly is going on and to have both sides of the story. So that's missing. I believe that's missing. Right now I'm joined by the CEO of Consulting Engineers of South Africa, Mr. Chris Campbell, and looking at how ill um, managed the appointment of the council members were. How does that um, affect democracy as a political system in our country? And a method used in all organizations when it comes to making decisions. There is a very old adage that says power corrupts and total power corrupts or absolute power corrupts, absolutely. And that's where the problem lies because then people start assuming that they may make decisions uninformed or not because they have been ordained to be able to do that and that doesn't fit in a democracy such as ours. And that is why it becomes so imperative that for the profession to mimic our democracy, you have to have a, a concurrent involvement of the 
regulatory body, sorry, Engineering Council of South Africa, the voluntary associations, be they Institution of Civil Engineering, Mechanical, Electrical. You have your industry bodies like Consulting Engineer South Africa or the Southern Confederation of uh, Civil Engineering Contractors. And then you have the academics because each of us have a role to play in this space. And I liked what one of the uh, attendees to the earlier talk raised was maybe a thing like professional registration should be done by a, a neutral body so that you cannot then through an act because that's starting to happen there are proposals now to amend the act the engineering professions act which strengthened the authority of the minister now that can't be good for a profession because you shouldn't have somebody that can make sweeping decisions that affect so many you should rather have a a matrix of the interested and affected parties coming together that informs best decision for the best outcome Right here, I'm joined by Dr. Titus Mate, who is the former EXA Council member. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us and welcome to Zyci TV. Thank you, ma'am. I know during the open discussion, you all touched on transformation. Do you think it has any role in this lawsuit? 46 names were proposed as opposed to 50 names. And I can declare now that the, the four names were left out because one, the representatives of the state, the, the names were submitted after the process, the advertisement process was closed, so they couldn't be uh, considered uh, during that process of evaluation. Also, the other two uh, professional uh, certificated engineers, as well as the uh, specified category, there were insufficient nominations, so the four names were left out for the minister to actually look at perhaps the existing database or whatever uh, for the minister to make a determination who fills those positions. My expectation was that after the consultations have taken place with the minister, then the full 50 list of names, even if including the changes that were made, is presented to the old uh, council for the old council to then ratify the decision and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and nominate and approve the nominated list after consultation with the minister. Unfortunately, this process did not take place. Mm -hmm. I don't recall any meeting or even uh, ad hoc uh, via round robin any decisions that were made by the outgoing council to actually ratify the final list that was submitted to the minister for approval. And I must just also say that I was part of the EXCO. So even at an EXCO level, outside the council meeting, there's an EXCO that is established that actually looks at, uh, you know, if there's any decision that has to be made on behalf of the council outside the council meetings. I'm joined here by Mark Deeks, who is the former SICE president in 2005. Thank you so much for joining us, Mark, and well, welcome to SICE TV. Thank you, Bokhle. Nice to be here. What do you think the Department of Public Works should have handled this appointment instead of how they've handled it now, which has unfortunately become a lawsuit? Well, one, one thinks that they probably, the, the officials, uh, should have been more receptive, should have been more open to the issues at stake, uh, and more diligent in actually following through the complaint rather than dismissing it or failing to respond. I think that has to be the lesson, you know, we're uh, in, in, in this democratic uh, situation we find ourselves in. It's actually not permissible for people to behave in, a, uh, in an officious way like that and actually not to take to heart the genuine concerns of, of voluntary associations who really are there to support EXA in everything that it does. It is unfortunate that EXA declined the invitation to the open discussion, which would have been a perfect opportunity for them to justify their decision and to come together with SAISI and the rest of the VAs to find solutions to resolve the matter. Due to their absence, this still leaves the unresolved matter one-sided. But then again, can their absence imply on a possibly confirmed wrongdoing on their side? I'm Bushle Tlachwayo. Thank you so much for joining us. And until the next event. Thank you.